Right under it, would you offer this with a word of prayer? I will. Thank you, Ed, please. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight. Lord, we want to thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed on, upon us individually and as a city. Uh, Lord, we'd ask you to be with us tonight as this council. Go forth and making decisions that concerns the city, city employees, and, and the future of this city. Lord, if you would, help us to make good, sound, well-judged decisions. Lord, if you would, be mindful of the fact that we ask you to keep us safe and, and be with us as we travel when we leave here tonight. Lord, we ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. If you have, if you go to your department reports and have questions, now would be the time. Are there any questions? No. Okay. We have one public comment. Steve Stewart. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Uh, Department heads, I've never stepped out of a reporter role to do this, so this is kind of odd, but I just want to throw an idea out. As you know, we have the 4th of July celebration and Christmas in the park every year. Uh, our bunch, and I know some of you do too, go over to Natchitoches every year, and there's something over there that's really impressed me. They have a stage where the bands perform, and uh, I, I did a little bit of research on the history. It was an old building on the Cane River, uh, I mean, over 100 years ago, where these barges or whatever would come through and it was like a customs house or something and all that's left is the the old uh, brick structure and what they did they filled it in with dirt and then they put probably what two or three inches of concrete on top they've got a permanent stage and it, it, it just stays there and then when they have uh, Christmas they erect a, um, a structure a tent like structure like, like we do at Sandy Creek Park and I got an idea because we really could use one, because what we use is just, you know, a little portable stage. The idea, and I'm just throwing it out there, it was something that would have to also be approved by Jasper ISD, but they've got a pile of bricks, which came from the old, old gym built in the 20s, and the bricks aren't doing anything. Just an idea, what if those bricks were taken, salvaged, and made into a, just a square uh, 20 by 20, 30 by 30, something like that, just a stage, or, or, or an outline, fill it in with dirt, two or three inches of concrete across the top, you've got a permanent stage forever. Name it the Jasper ISD stage, something like that. Just an idea. I want to throw it out there, and I'm going to throw it out to Jasper ISD and see what they think. That's it. Thank you. All right. I want to consider two sets of minutes for the regular city council meeting of June 20th. And a special call city month and city council meeting of June 27th. I make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Pass unanimous. Item number two, consider a statement of qualifications for engineering services for Sandy Creek Drainage Project. <coughs> This is the one that we had to postpone and table last time because of the lack of uh, submissions. But this is in order for us to get this, the creeks sand clean underneath the creek barrels after the flood of March the 25th. All that white sand that accumulated when it stopped, we have to have an engineering firm which has to go through and get a permission from the Corps. And because of the regulations and stuff, this is a process that we have to do just to get a statement of qualification. Will be, you know, the only one that submitted one was Goodwin Lasseter and Strong, which is one of the engineering firms that we that we use all the time. So, so you need a motion to consider the SOQ for engineering services? Yes, sir. I make right, a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Or Aye. Any discussion? Uh, is this part of the downtown project? Well, this is going to be, this will be, uh, we might possibly get FEMA to reimburse us. It depends after on the fact. after the fact. But we, but we have to get the permits from the Corps to go in and do the work, and they won't let us do that. 
do that without an SOQ. SOQ would end your farm and go back in. But we quite possibly, but we'll have to get it out one way or the other because if we don't, the next time we have a flood, it's just going to flood that much quicker because the sand's just there. And if we were to take it out and move it, we could just do that. But we can't do it without the permits from the state. Do that for yeah. And if we were to put it back in, then we had to take, take it out and test it. So we got a motion and a second. All in favor? What kind of expense we're going to have on that? Where the expense on us may be, what, $10,000 to yeah, begin with? The permit is the biggest expense to get the permit in the done. And we'll just use our manpower to get the debris out of our needle bridges. And this is primarily under Main Street. 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 But if you'll look at one end of the other up uh, and look down at those barrels, you'll see some of them are three quarters way filled with white yeah. sand. Yeah. I know on Manning Street that white sand just it just dumps <coughs> out right in that bed. There's one barrel on the Marvin Hancock that's about eighty percent water. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Pass unanimously. Item number three. Consider letter of support for signage supporting the Jasper Arboretum and the Master Gardeners of the Jas as Jasper as the Butterfly Capital of Texas. I move to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Passed unanimously. Item four, consider ordinance number seven dash eight dash sixteen and contract with Purdue Brandon Fielder Collins and Mott LLP to provide additional collection penalties for delinquent municipal <coughs> fines and fees. <laughs> time off uh, before I represent this. Uh, I hope all of you got a copy of the proposal, if not at least the one that I gave to you back in April, or it may be in your uh, materials. On that you'll see some of our client list, <clears throat> and those are some of the uh, courts and cities that we represent collecting their fines and fees, and they've chosen to use an outside law firm to help supplement their collection efforts. Uh, a lot of uh, cities have their own in-house collection uh, staff, but if you keep in mind that, that we are only just a supplemental tool to help them by identifying uh, where folks live and sending them letters and getting their uh, phone numbers and making contact with them to get a commitment to pay that overdue uh, fine and fee. The fine and fee penalty does not kick in until it's turned over to us. And there are many of the cases that stay in-house. Uh, they may be uh, doing work assignments, working it off. Uh, but not every, not every ticket comes to outside collections and is assessed that penalty. And the, uh, the ordinance is that instrument that authorizes uh, the city to add that 30%, which is authorized by the criminal code, uh, which is passed on to the offender. So there's no cost to the city. Uh, we get our money only when we collect your money. And the 30% is added on top of your uh, debt, so you will be paid 100%. Uh, what, what I'm asking, uh, if, you're, if you're considering going into a contract with our firm to help your court collect those unpaid fines and fees, uh, then you will have to consider this ordinance and pass that before we go on uh, to the second part. So I don't know if this is out of order, or, but you have to do one before you do the other. Uh, I know there's some questions, there were some questions from a couple of the, uh, councilmen about uh, the add-on fee. That add-on fee, again, is paid by the offender. Uh, 
collection rate for these types of debts are far lower than, say, your uh, ad valorem delinquent tax, because that's usually secured by land, and you've got something there. These are unsecured debts. 30%. 30%. Uh, that, that is the uh, fee that, that we charge uh, all of our clients, uh, and you'll find that that's the uh, industry standard, so to speak. Uh, certainly it's negotiable, but, but we ask 30% because they are very difficult to collect. Some of these fines and fees have been on the books for years, and we've got to track them down all across the United States. And, and once we locate them, that still doesn't guarantee payment. Uh, we have to get them uh, motivated to pay. One, one of the uh, uh, programs that we have in place is what they call the Warrant Roundup. Every year, all the counties in the state of Texas come together and they have a mass roundup. It's advertised throughout all the cities and this puts uh, the offender on high alert because they don't know if they're maybe going through uh, Nacogdoches County and they may feel like they're going to get stopped there by their folks up there because they're in communication with Jasper County. So the more roundup, in our experience, just to give you an example, San Jacinto County, one of our uh, one of our uh, JPs, he always gets at least ten times the amount of collections during those two months because because that one program, when we send out these notices in red, high red letters, saying that you may be arrested, even though we don't have the jurisdiction to arrest, only the court does, and that's another thing. The, the, the judge and city clerks, they're, they're going to run that program. We're just there to help. Uh, if they don't choose to give us an account for whatever reason, all they do is they don't put it on the upload that we get each month. They can go through and handpick which accounts they want as long as they're 60 days past due. And again, a lot of these uh, are, are going to be aged 10, 15 years old. But they're sitting on the books, they're not getting collected. At least give it, give it a chance to, to try and collect what's just sitting there. It's money found at no cost to the city. And uh, I think it's a win situation uh, in programs like this. And, and again, cities throughout Texas, and these, this is just a list of, of our clients. If you what are we doing this. now, Kurt? From what I understand, they're trying to set up payment plans, and when the payment plans are defaulted, I believe they try to give them a chance to work it out through public service. They don't show up. They don't, they don't, no, show, they don't up. show up. Yeah. Now, again, the court, they have an opportunity to collect that money for the first 60 days. We have some clients that don't give it to us for 120 days. They want, they want that additional time to try and collect it themselves. But Again, we're a tool. We only get used as much as they decide to use us. And, uh, you know, excuse me. Yes. It's beyond me how this could have happened in the first place. How, how can you let fines be delayed for 13 years? Somebody's dragging but they're not doing their job. Uh, which is not your fault. Uh, the judge is not here tonight to answer any of our questions, but uh, I'm, I'm confused about that because it takes three days to issue a warrant to put them back in jail. If you see, after 60 days, if you see that they're not going to make an effort to pay that fine, let them finish serving their sentence in jail, you know? And, and again, the judge is not here to answer that question. Maybe you can, Gerald. Why only eight days in jail? Well, I was told that they can only serve eight days in jail. Can you answer that question for me? Uh, they can stay in there as long as they need to, um, depending on how much they get. But the sheriff's office gives them $100 a day uh, to wherever the family is. Uh, municipality, they only give $50. So he can be in there as long as he needs to to pay that family. Uh, and they can just stay eight days. Well, I was told it was eight days, and then, you know, then you let them out. 
and then I've offered them community service, and of course they jump on that, but they never show up to do community service with me. So, so after three days of that, you know, we could issue a warrant, put them back in jail, and finish serving their sentence out. This would avoid all these problems of these delinquent fines. So, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Most of these delinquent fines are going to be uh, going to be uh, people out of yeah, Beaumont, uh, San Antonio that's passed through and got a ticket and just didn't pay it. Uh, and the odds on tracking them down as far as them getting stopped and, and picked up that way are slim. That's why there's some that are so far delinquent. Uh, and being a municipality, the statute of limitations don't come in. Our class. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> I, th I think that's a good addition to what you said yeah. because uh, most of the in county offenders, the judge may choose to deal with them on a different kind of program before they turn it over to outside collections. Only when they're given to us do we send out notices, get on the phone, try to track them down, and, and then we deal with them and tell them to pay the court. It's, again, it's, it's an added tool maybe to, to, to help the deficiency there where it was unsuccessful for, for five or ten years. Uh, but going forward, we're going to work with them to increase their collection rate for even those that are six months, nine months a year, so that they don't become five years, ten years. So this is a good, useful tool for his office to use. Do we need a motion? And clarify. Any more discussion? Do we have a motion? Do we have a motion? I also move that we approve or I go forward with it. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? That passed. Might as well stay there for move the next one. <laughs> okay. Uh, consider contract with Purdue Brandon. Uh, to collect mowing, demolition, paving liens, and assessments with delinquent taxes. Uh, this, uh, I was approached by the permit department uh, how they could get some of that money that they've expended on those mowing, liens, and demolition through the tax cases. Because it doesn't fall under the proper Texas property tax code, there's really not any uh, uh, I don't know, vehicle to try and collect those. Those have to be uh, contracted directly with the city. That's why we won't be adding any additional penalty to the mowing lanes. That money will come out of your 100%. Okay? From what I'm visiting with their office, they've got probably fifty dollars to $70,000 of mowing lanes that you'll probably never see. Unless you try and put that lien in your tax judgment. And by doing that, that means whenever that property sells at a tax sale, your mowing liens are going to be paid. Right now, if you don't uh, become part of the judgment, they're wiped out. Liens, bank liens, any kind of liens except the IRS, they, they're never wiped out. But, but these mowing liens, by including them in your tax judgments, which we can do when we, when we uh, start filing on property that's had mowing liens, I'll contact them and say, I just filed a suit on this property, do you have any uh, mowing liens? And they say, well, uh, yes we do. And so I'll get that amount and I'll tack it on to the judgment. Now, this is no guarantee that just because it's in the lawsuit that it's going to get paid, but it's still there's a chance that it's going to get paid if the property brings enough money at a tax sale or a resale, if it's sold as a resale. Uh, but right now, uh, your only chance of collecting mowing liens are through your office uh, phone calls and letters. And just hope you can get them in here to pay and do the right thing. Or cut their water off, uh, whatever other remedies you all have in your collection program. But by contracting with us and letting us then represent you on these liens, 
we have a shot at collecting. And you'll be paid along with the county, the school, and all the other taxing jurisdictions. So it puts a, it puts a priority on those liens just by putting them in the lawsuit and having them part of the judgment. And when the judgment's satisfied, you'll get your money. And what we're asking for is 25% of what's collected. Basically, you give me a, a, a mowing lien that's been on the books for five years. If we can contact those, those folks, we'll collect it. I give you three, I keep one. If it's part of a, a delinquent tax lawsuit, whenever the suit is resolved through a tax sale and there is money realized, I give you three, I keep one. And that's, that's basically what we're asking the council to do is to, to initiate a program like this. I thought it was delinquent taxes. You already collected delinquent taxes. And there was a fee built in. That's for the, the tax element of the lawsuit. Okay, but this is this is okay. Well, it says with, 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 with delinquent taxes. What assessments would you have in the delinquent taxes? There might be a, a late charge or a reconnect fee or uh, whatever other. Uh, like would you know uh, any delinquent taxes? No, there wouldn't be any type of, I mean, we don't. Any other? No assessments of delinquent taxes. Yeah, because we don't tack on uh, outstanding bills or anything else like that to it. The only thing that would be attached to a lien is going to be the mowing. Okay. It's just put there in case there was any other type of gotcha. Denise, do you know how many cases we have? I mean, what what kind of volume are we talking about here? Oh, I'm sorry. I, no, I don't because, I mean, you, you can go back to as far as, I mean, we would really just have to run to go to the court with the county clerk's office and run a report, get them to run a report of anything that's got a flip the city of Jackson's got a lien on. I mean, it probably since, since my 13, 14 years, I mean, 14 years, it's probably probably twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars worth of liens for demolition and stuff that we've done. But I can tell you before that. And did Mr. Lee, is oh. it Lee, Mr. Lee? Yes. Is that right, correct? You said that, uh, that Mike Collier had told you it was about seventy thousand dollars. Well, I, I I went over uh, with the the clerk. We went over some of the uh, amounts that were still on the books. I think we went back to 2010. After 10 years, that lien is uh, no good anymore. You have to refile it. So we just went back to 2010, and I think we came up with something close to 50000 Does this mean that the demolition and the payment stays in the Demolition and, and mowing? We don't do any. I don't. We do demolition. We do demolition. Uh, the paving leagues. I don't know where that came in there. Well, that's just some of your work. Yeah, that's okay. part of our standard. That's all we do. Is, well, if we don't need it, we don't need it. Either. You know. Uh, well, if you don't need it, we don't have it. But, but if you ever start assessing paving, well, yeah. But if you if, if you ever start assessing paving leagues in the future, it's already there. I, I thought this uh, fit Michael Collier's uh, job description. No, collection. The collection of it? No, they. No, I didn't say that. I said, <coughs> you know, the mowing and the demolition and making sure it was paid. Well, now he can't make sure they're paid. They can file. He can file a lien on it when they get to that's, that form. That's what he I'm does saying. file yeah. a lien on it. Okay. But what this does is, is if this they is don't get it collected and, and the lien is attached to the property. <laughs> If that property was to go to sale, it allows him to tack that lien dollar amount onto the sale, but hopefully they would get it. All that they do is, is the Rhonda does, is she will send a letter to the owners. But most of the time on the properties that we attach liens to and mowers and stuff, it's just exactly like what he said. They are not out of town. They are mostly heirs or heirs that don't care, that live out of town because, you know, you, we can't find them half the time and that's when we post like we do after a certain number of days just to be able to get the the unsightliness taken care of. This just adds another layer. Yes, it's not gonna cost us anything and it may and if we may get lucky when they do go sell a house that we get it. Otherwise it does stay on the books. But Miss Hazel it does stay the same way like that on the utilities because when people move and if they don't collect the final bill or they still it, 
we keep them on the books for the <coughs> fact that any time they ever come back in, we can go back in and, and we make them collect that before we give them new service if they, so they don't skip trace okay. off of the no bill. Okay. <coughs> I make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Pass the number six, which is considered mainstream electric poles and distribution replacements. Denise? This is, a, <coughs> this is part of Main Street, but it was not a part of Main Street. When we started going through, and Danny was looking at, at the electrical upgrades and our budget and stuff like that, Main Street came up as far as wanting to get rid of the old copper. Is that right? Yeah. So I like what we're upgrading Hunterwood. So when we talked about doing the Main Street project, that's when we thought about, well, okay, if we're going to do it and do the Main Street project, then we need to pull it in to the Main Street project as far as the decorative poles. This is something that we still will deal with. We still have some logistics to work out with AT&T. Cable, New Wave Cable, they're okay with it, but we still have to work with out with AT&T, but I can't go forward with that until I know if we're going to go, if we're going to be able to upgrade the lines, get rid of the old stuff, put the new cable, and put the new poles down Main Street. So, or four. How far? It will go from 190 to four, uh, Houston Street to start with this one, on this, on this part of it. Any of the other ones will be included in the other phases if we were to do anything on that. But, those poles have been there since the, none of these were replaced during reader. We were very lucky, but they are they're getting old besides the fact that uh, the uh, old wiring. You may have said this and I was digging around for the agenda where you talked about metal pool poles, like the aluminum poles or like yes. we have in the park. No. The, the, the galvanized. 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 Where are these for the Well, the, we've got we've got Black Power has that excess funds in there. Which is it for the grant? No, sir, it's not part of the grant or anything. It's not part of the, the split split between the city of Jetco and not part of anything of the TechSoc grant or the uh, funding foundation. It can be out of excess Black Power funds. I make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Say aye. That's a lot of money, Schofield. You jump right in here and second do that. And I appreciate it, Mr. Schofield. <laughs> All in favor? Well, and he's probably appreciating that new wire at home. That hot sun. I'm afraid you'd be squealing down here for half a million dollars. Don't talk and don't move that fast. Don't talk. Number seven, consider budget uh, workshop, August 9th or 11th. Nine. Okay, well, what day is that on? It's a Tuesday. Nine. I can't on Tuesday. 9th on Tuesday, 11th on, the, on the Thursday. Thursday. Well, okay, I'll change my schedule. Uh, 9th is fine. Okay. okay. Along with you. What time would y'all like in the middle of the day? You like at 1 o'clock? You like at lunch? And y'all can work Lunch sounds day. awesome. How about we start at 11? <laughs> 11 okay? That's okay. And that yes. maybe we can finish by 11 to 1? Yes. Well, so we have it for dinner. Whatever you want, Mr. Yeah. Possible. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. 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 Uh
McDonnell had initiated. And we are getting ready to, I've only did a couple of uh, procedure policies. Reason being, I'm going to get ready to uh, test for captain position. And I needed to amend the old policy to where it fit the current department. Uh, the old policy had a couple, and they should be in the back, <coughs> a couple of uh, job descriptions that we no longer have. Uh, so they just need to be struck out. And then we have some new job descriptions that weren't in there, uh, like SRO, uh, some of the other uh, mental health officer, things like that. So all I did was I added those job descriptions to it. That's the amendment. The only amendment that part of it that um, I, would, I would draw your attention to is in the uh, promotional process. Uh, it says that we test, we do a roll board, and if we do not have three candidates that are qualified to test for the position, then we can go to the next lower rank. In other words, if, if like the captain for testing, um, they, they need to have a master's uh, certificate in law enforcement. Uh, if we don't have three candidates that fit that qualification, we can go down to someone with an advance uh, in order to get enough pool to make a decent uh, decision. And really, that's that's the only changes. Um, and I mean, I'll be bringing more, of course. Time, but these I want to get into effect before we do our, our testing and promotion. Uh, which is Gerald, when is the active shooter scenario? It is Thursday morning. Thursday morning. Uh, we're going to start the scenario about nine. Can you kind of give us a little summary of what that's going to entail? Uh, I can tell you the scenario, uh, I, I, I'll tell you the, the, how it's going to be addressed, uh, I don't want that put out, uh, okay. it's strictly going to be kept, because bad guys watch and listen to you, uh, we don't want to know how we're going to address it. Um, unfortunately, as you know, we have shootings at schools and businesses that were, seem like every week, and this scenario, Myself, Billy Ted, uh, the fire department, uh, Life Flight, the ambulances, the Dutch Memorial Hospital. We're all putting this together as a mass training. Uh, we're going to have victims. Uh, we will run it as a live scenario. Uh, we will have a couple of active shooters inside the building uh, with the fire alarms, the smoke, the whole nine yards. Some of the objectives is to, some of our guys have never been in a building when there were uh, shots being fired. Uh, it's very difficult to hone in on where that shot comes from when you're inside the building. And I want them to get that experience to, to see what, okay, I can hear the shots, but how do I find the quickest route to come? Because the way you're trained in active shooters is you bypass all victims, and it's supposed to be all victims, uh, and you go directly to the threat. You eliminate the threat, and then, once you get it safe, then you, you start tending and getting the, the victims out. Um, we're going to stage at the high school. Like I said, we're going to have uh, around 30 to 40 uh, kids, victims, that the school will go through their lockdown process. We will uh, go through and address the active shooter. And then once that, and we've got game wardens, we've got uh, DPS, we've got county, constables, all, all the law enforcement, even the park rangers are going to be a, a members in this. We're going to break into three-man teams so everybody gets a shot to go through and, and see what it's like. Uh, once that is complete, then we're going to come in and do the 
evacuation part of it, the uh, uh, tending to the triage, getting them to, they're actually going to take them to the hospital, some of them, if I'm out, maybe life flat, one or two of them, just, you know, go to the process. We'll have a triage set up out there, um, and they'll go from the scene to the triage, be assessed, and go from the uh, triage to the hospital. Real life, you would be hitting multiple hospitals, uh, depending on the severity of the wounds or whatever. Um, we will process the scene uh, as normal crime scene with uh, deceased persons, etc. That'll be a walkthrough type thing. It won't be real detailed like it normally would, simply because it's not feasible. Um, but we're doing all this through. EEOC and afterwards we're going to uh, have a meeting at the annex and discuss where we were lacking, things we can address. Uh, we've already just in preparations have came up with a couple of issues and got them straightened out. Uh, one being we found out their primary challenge. That's going to have to bid out because we, we've already contracted them. They're going to come forward and well, it's work in progress. The damage was found there in the work in progress, and we'll go back. And and these are reasonable costs. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, that's a very good cost. Do I have a motion? I make a motion, too. Do I have a second? Back. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Pass unanimously. It is now 6.40. We will convene an executive session. We are reconvening at 7.06. Is there any action from the executive session dealing with uh, personnel matters? Yeah, I make a motion that we give Chief Hall the permission to handle personnel matters within the department at East East Bay. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Item number two, deliberation regarding real, real property. Any action? Yes, I'll make a motion that the city purchase from or share the property, better known as Tri Night Motel, for the amount of $12,000. I second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? There being no further action, we stand adjourned.